Yeah, how is there not a fight there? I wanted like a big struggle with this giant guy wrestling Joe into the oh, house. That would have been so good. Joe He's like grabs the door frame like yes. a cat you're trying to put into a carrier. <laughs> no, no. Get it. He, he, he just goes limp. He's pulling him. His pants come down around his ankle. Joseph, come on now. I'm this shitting now. I'm shitting. You want to deal? You're gonna have to deal with the shit first before we get to this. I'll throw up on you like a vulture. <laughs> <laughs> God <laughs> awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because at least two of us are really bad at saying no. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who's a good writer? I have no idea. Sir Francis Bacon. <laughs> I've been reading a lot during this quarantine. Yeah. I got right. a good place. All right. All right. Nice. Great to start off with a good evergreen choke. <laughs> I was um, going to say, <laughs> we, made, we did it, everybody. We made it zero seconds before our evergreen episode. <laughs> All right, and of course, that voice you just heard was coming from 900 miles to my northeast. That's my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm sad about the Modern Family finale, Noah. <laughs> what? Modern Family, wrapping up this week. It is April 10th of 2020, isn't it? <laughs> So, yeah, so just so you know, guys, we have a habit once in a while when we have an extra week and a hey, quarantine is a great time to have an extra week to just record an episode, toss it up on the shelf. So who the hell knows when you're going to hear this? My guess is some of the jokes will be outdated by then. I might be dead by then. <laughs> dead yeah, by that, then. that Francis Bacon reference is going to be a lot worse in a few months. The age on that <laughs> changes. You wait, you wait and see, Heath. You yes. just wait and see. <laughs> that I might be dead by then, Gambit. I do it every time we re pre record something, but one day it's going to pay off. You guys it, will yeah, see. Yeah, it's going to be huge. It'll be huge one day. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be it's like that drug show. The long con. All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Sons of Thunder, episode two The Blind Fighting the Blind is the title. <laughs> And uh, by the way, if you had trouble finding it on Pure Flix, I did too. It takes at least two tries in my experience. Ooh. Yeah, I searched for Sons of Thunder on the search bar on Pure Flix, and the results screen just said, please buy a lifetime membership to Pure Flix. <laughs> please. Look, please. If you're fucking searching for Sons of Thunder, you are our target demographic. Yeah. <laughs> If you're searching for Sons of Thunder, you might be dead when this airs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that was all it said on that screen. There was no option to click on a show called Sons of Thunder. Wow. I actually had to hit the back button and search again. <laughs> that really happened. So speaking of Christian movie searches, maybe this is just me, but I have Pure Flix on my Apple TV. And for some reason, that is now connected to, like, any Apple TV search I ever do. So now if I'm ever like, hey, Siri, play the Beatles. This fuck, it's like, did you mean the Beatles are Satanists who will drag you to hell on Pure Flix? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I well, did now that you mention it, yeah. <laughs> Alexa's inside my house now. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Sons of Thunder episode two. It's the story of how God created a meth dealing biker gang so that one of the gang could eventually quit and then eventually resolve the humanitarian crisis in the West Texas family owned woodworking sector. That's, that's <laughs> the plot, right? <laughs> I don't think they work wood, but I don't know. We were they way say woodworking. Uh, we're going to get to what that means to them, but that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Eli. How bad was this episode? Well, if you love hardcore bikers living on the open road on a journey with no name, but you wish they spent more time in family court, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this episode. They just they just didn't have a second episode, right? Like yeah. this is, <laughs> the entire time I was they just like, all right, first episode, Mexican cartels ravaging the southern border. Second episode, <laughs> which is worst, 
punching or yelling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Neither both. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Neither wow. both. Buy a lifetime membership. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst punch. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. So good. And this time, by the way, it's not from the main guy, the uh, WWE wrestler based on a lawn gnome and <laughs> dozer <laughs> water physical acting. It, that's not who does it. That's fantastic. It's from the guy who hires him for an, an episode of work, which seems to be the premise of this show that mm -hmm. happens each week. Yep. So this guy who hires him gets mad at his father-in-law. And at one point he walks up to his father-in-law and he's like, hey, uh, Lane, don't don't move. I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to do a thing. Just give me a second. And then he's, he spends like the rest of act two winding up this punch. <laughs> it's so slow. He does yoga like he does like an old timey baseball wind up with a high <laughs> kick. It's so crazy. He might as well shake off a bunch of signs from a catcher and then like <laughs> check the runner at first base, throw over to first base, get the ball back. And I punched you. <laughs> I punched you, by the way. React, please. <laughs> It's like punching somebody. You ever try to punch somebody in a dream and you're just, you find you're, you've got your fist against their face and then you just push it. It's like that. Yeah. Why is my hand a desk? What happened? <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst title tees. Look, yeah, you know, I, sure. I try to be woke. I really do. Right. I fight against my white middle-class college educated straight guy on the internet nature every day. But the title of this episode is the blind fighting the blind. And that sounds goddamn hilarious, right? Yes, it like, does. Thank back you. Back in the 80s, you could do that as a bit. It would be some shtick. Or either that, or it sounds like total ninja badassery. One way or the other, that sounds fucking awesome. But that never happens, and nothing like it does. No, and there's... We'll get to it. There's a prominently featured hammer in, in this episode. <laughs> so... I didn't catch the title. I, like, I, you know, moused over it a little bit later, and I was like, oh, the blind finding the blind. How are they going to... How are they going to work that in? Like a a blind hammer fight? This is going to be interesting. Whatever happens is going to be interesting. No, that's not what happens. Well, it's also so indicative of the worldview, right? Which was my best worst, which is best worst equivalency because the catchphrase is the blind leading the blind. And when they were writing this, they were like, yeah, but they're in a fight. Good catch. The blind fighting the blind. We did it, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> So, again, I went with best worst equivalency. And look, we've inhabited some weird fucking worldviews on this show. Marry your rapist. Pay your friends to fuck your mom. Whatever Kirk Cameron thinks Christmas is. <laughs> <laughs> but this episode manages to fuck up. Do we do a hit? Hmm. Where did they land? <laughs> they, I don't know where they landed. They land on maybe. I feel <laughs> like they land on maybe. Yeah. Yes, no, neither, both. <laughs> yep. Lifetime subscription. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've been missing Simon and world famous character actor Maverick Bon Hogg. So we're going <laughs> to. I take... forgot that's his name. Yep. <laughs> So we'll keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the boring work drama you pretend to be interested in for your significant other's sake. That is Sons of Thunder, Episode 2. Last time on Sons of Thunder. My name is Simon, and I'm a hardcore biker with a wrong to right. Hey, uh, you want to work slash live at my house? Because that's a thing. Damn tootin'. Great, great. This is my shitty son. You'll be hunting Mexicans together. You ever kill anybody? Because I sure have. Help, help. The Chartes just follow me to the farm. I'll save you. I will not. Um, okay? Well done, Simon. You murdered those bad Mexicans. Uh, Mexican girl? Uh, my name is actually... Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I am your dad now. Oh, I, I, I tell my father. And I called ice on you. Oh, you did. I did. I'm your dad. Uh, I'm sorry. Why was I in this episode? No idea. Yeah, me neither. Nope. 
And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with more of that awesome high noon in the desert exterior lighting that this show is known for. That's nice. (laughs) (laughs) The golden hour. It's just a gold, just the color gold. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, so Simon Pulse's noisy ass motorcycle up to some shithole gas station in West Texas. Yeah. Great big American flag hanging off the back of it. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, oh, good. An American gas station. None of that foreign oil. I like to buy domestic. <laughs> Fuck you. I have American never understood flag. why these movies think an American flag in front of the shittiest possible American thing is somehow right? majestic. No. Like, oh, here's a heap of dog shit with a flag on it. Yeah. Pride? I don't know. No. It's not even a good flag. It's like a kid made it on like paint. It sucks. (laughs) And also, okay, so we watch Simon go in and prepay for his gas, right? Like we watch that transaction take place. He wanders off. He comes back. He starts gassing up. And I'm like, you know what? I bet that exists so that we know as an audience, he's not one of them suckers. What lets the government know where he is all the time by using a dumbass ATM card. (laughs) <laughs> I honestly think that's why they added that. Just paying for gas with like handfuls of loose silvers. <laughs> <laughs> is West Texas. Takes a swig from his Jim Baker labeled bottled water. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, but then we get that long, dumbass, porny fucking shot where it like moves up from his Harley to him, his badass and shit with the American flag in the background. Well, what's amazing is they're trying to do like a badass panning shot of him from below, but his goofy ass garden gnome beard is blowing at a right (laughs) angle because the wind is too strong. It's it's magic. It's fucking magic. I wanted like a wizard to come up behind him and be like, hey, buddy, are you almost fucking done? You gotta fuel up my cloud here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, during the shot, they also pan over to the town sign thing that's like, oh, this is a historic yeah, mm-hmm. site, Deep Creek, Texas. And <laughs> exact words on this sign, I'm guessing this is a real sign in a place called Deep Creek, Texas. It says, played a central role in early town life as a scene of picnics, horse races, and baptisms. Yep. It's <laughs> that's, that's a weird fucking day at the <laughs> Deep Creek, Texas area. Look, if, if you know a better way to dry off from your baptism than a horse race, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote in my notes at this point, the slow gassing up my hog in front of this here American flag hanging off of this here oil derrick scene is like the most American thing I have ever seen that you can't die from, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right up there. Also up there, most American things, the leather vest he's wearing, the, mm. it's supposed to be a biker gang vest, but all it has is a cross on the back, and yep. that's it. Yeah, mm. Th- That should be the state flag of Texas, a leather <laughs> vest with a cross on it. And, and like we that. don't mean that image on a flag. I mean the actual vest itself. Yeah, right, be right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean that guy's vest. It's like the right size for the Capitol building. Like yep, everybody wins. Mm-hmm. Two votes. He is enormous. <laughs> Rather large. He's like seven feet tall, I think. A couple times we see him next to somebody else, and it's comically different in height. All right, so now while he's gassing up his motorcycle, we flash back to before the series started. We're in this purple lit bar and Simon's there reading his Bible by like, you know, purple neon bar light. It doesn't (laughs) seem ideal. Oh, how how bad did you want him to take out like a pen light or one of those book clip on lights? (laughs) I should read at home. (laughs) And this is when we meet Don Swayze, the real talent in the Swayze family. Yes, this is Patrick's brother. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Yes. He plays the president of the biker gang mm-hmm. Don named Swayze. Angie D. Angie D. <laughs> Look, if we can count on Christians for one thing, isn't it gay fear? And yet their badass motorcycle president is named Angie. Yeah. yeah like they might as well break word. into a musical number stolen from Greece. About like, Look <laughs> at me. I'm Angie D. I'm in a biker gang. This is different. Technically. Also, I don't know if this is a real, but do do biker gangs have patches to signify their rank within yeah. the biker I gang? I bet they, they do. do. 
I bet um, that just seemed too I, damn I am silly and perfect. From watching season one of Sons of Anarchy, which they stole in yeah. this. Yes. All real. right. So, but Don Swayze, though, he's there and he's not buying this whole dozer has a Bible bullshit. Now, we should explain for those of you who weren't around for episode one that we learned in that episode that dozer used to be this badass biker, but then he found a Bible and he fell in love with Jesus and he left the biker gang. We're flashing back to that traumatic moment, apparently, right? Because he's yeah. not like Don Swayze's there to tell him, like, dude, you have not been bikering very good since you found Jesus. And and him and Angie have the shitty new girlfriend fight. He's like, you're making the crime this weekend. And Dozer's like, ooh, mm. I got brunch with the Bible's friends. Can we do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And Angie's like, all right, I got. OK, just it's a cool Bible, I guess. Just quick thing. Last week, just good example. You stopped in the middle of our meth deal to ask if our dealer knows Jesus. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, gotta tell that shit back, man. Yeah. Which is very confusing because our supplier's name is Jesus, and that really blew up it, the whole it, thing. It felt like age. there was a racial overtone. Yeah, there was a whole thing. So uh, just big takeaway from this meeting. We're a meth gang. You want to just focus up a little bit during the meth ganging, if you don't yeah, mind? I, I wanted him to, like, call him into his office. Dozer, I want to talk to you about your work-life balance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I have this copy of Who Moved My Cheese. I want you to <laughs> should look through it. Also, one other thing on this scene. When Angie D., the president, walks into this bar, he immediately walks over to the service bar and picks up two large, I'm pretty sure, glasses of juice. Mm. <laughs> so and then he walks over to Dozer and he's like, as you can see, I'm so important. A bartender has, you know, two glasses of juice just waiting for me when I arrive. I'm the president. And like that he does this throughout. I like I wanted that explain. It's like a weird power move. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I wanted a waitress in the background of their conversation to just come over to the bar looking for the drinks and be like, fucking Angie. In the background. <laughs> What did I tell you? Just use the mobile app and we'll have it ready for you. It's not because you're the president. Anybody can use the mobile app. <laughs> Asshole. And we should also point out, by the way, that sitting over off to the side here and getting angry every time Dozer says something about Jesus is the one, the only Maverick Von Hogg. <laughs> oh, um, oh it's yeah. Another extraordinarily large tattooed gentleman that I'm guessing this season culminates in you know, him falling in love with Jesus. But I'm just guessing. I'm spoiler. Spoiler. Whose eyebrows are drawn on with Sharpie. Just quick reminder. Yeah, they are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we exit that flashback. Don't worry. We'll be back. And uh, he, he's still filling up his gas tank. So he finishes that. We watch him biker around for a little bit. Right. And then eventually he passes two guys having a yelly argument on the side of the road. <laughs> he sees a yelly hammer wielding fight and he's like, hmm, I think I should be involved in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like my business. He pulls over and he's like, hey, gentlemen, sorry to interrupt your uh, uh, hammer fight. Uh, let's all just take a minute and read from First Corinthians, if you don't yes. mind. God yes. is love. Is he not? Yeah. So, <laughs> and can, can we talk about the hammer specifically for a second that this guy's carrying? Oh, please do. He's brandishing it like he's got Thor's hammer. Like yeah. it's a big <laughs> fucking deal. But it's a crafting mallet. It's, yes. it's, it's like, he's, he's like, I am son of Odin. Hold on. Let me just, this, this joint on my birdhouse isn't quite plus. <laughs> Sorry, son of Odin. <laughs> Yeah, it's really sad that he doesn't hit him or the vehicle with it because you know there would have been some tinks that they had to get out in, in later sound of air. <laughs> tink, tink, get out here and talk to me, you bastard. <laughs> tink, tink, tink. <laughs> Bounces back at him or something. I so wanted this to turn out to just be a gay couple having like a couple of spite. Would have really freaked out the Christian biker, but no, that didn't work out. And so, okay, so eventually, though, we don't really learn who these people are. But the younger guy yells at the older guy. The older guy drives away. The younger guy's the one holding the hammer. 
And then he turns to fucking Simon and they realize that this isn't really, they haven't really met yet. And the writers aren't talented enough to figure out what to have, like how this would then go. So this character literally just turns to the main character and says, so what are you doing in this scene? Which the the little, literal fucking words are. So what's your deal? (laughs) Hey man, you're weird. Don't interrupt hammer fights. Explain yourself, please. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he, and of course, Simon says, well, you know, you guys seem like you were in a fight. And I thought to myself, what would Jesus do? And it's like, "Mm, yeah, see, when Jesus sees a hammer, he has a totally different reaction at this point, I would bet. But what do I know? But Jesus literally chased his competition around with a whip. It would be hard to more accurately describe Jesus's behavior than chasing around your professional competition with a tool. Well, they, they even <laughs> drill into that, right? Because the guy says, like, you know, he's like, what would Jesus do? And he's like, well, I don't I don't know. And he's like, well, something tells me he wouldn't have chased his uh, competitors in the woodworking business around with a hammer in his hand. And it's just like, dude, the only thing you do in between scenes is read that goddamn book. <laughs> right? You know good and fucking well that that's what he did. He just walks <laughs> over to a fig tree and beats the fuck out of it with the hammer. This, I, I'm pretty sure I read this is what Jesus could do. Right? No, that I, that I can get you behind. Let me hold its arms for you. <laughs> Barren motherfucker. And, and, then he, and then basically Simon goes like, so uh, is there any chance that you would like to hire me for an episode's worth of job? <laughs> just out of nowhere. He's like, so do you do all this? hammer waving on your own or <laughs> and he's like yeah you can have a job to which simon replies can i live with you <laughs> and the guy's like yeah obviously what are you talking about what? it's the format of the show so the guy's like yeah but he's like i guess this isn't really how jobs work most of the time we should probably drop that ladder convention as quickly as possible. I know it means having to shoot the inside of a hotel room, but we're worth it. You know, <laughs> easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says, I'll work for you if I can live in your place of business. And the guy's like, Yeah, all right. <laughs> Whatever. You can sleep in this garage. <laughs> So we, we we cut to him in the garage. It's late at night. He's reading the Bible because that's literally, again, the only thing he does in between scenes when suddenly a beautiful young woman shows up with a sandwich like they yep. do. I thought I had switched tabs by accident, but no, no, it's part of, the, <laughs> part of the show. She's like, hi, my husband told me he invited someone on the side of the road to live where we sleep. I brought you a sandwich. Are you murderer. Just real <laughs> quick, are you a murderer? And to be clear, at that point, Eli still wasn't sure if it was his porn tab or not. Yes, that absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. what no, he exactly, searched for. Exactly. Yeah. I made it to the end of this episode unsure if it was my porn <laughs> tab or not. <laughs> and she goes, and she notices his Bible at this point, too, and she goes, oh, are you a Christian? He goes, I try to be, and she's like, isn't it literally just apologizing to yourself once? He's like, yeah, it's just apologizing to yourself. Yeah, so I guess. So did I, you do yeah. that? Yes. What do you mean <laughs> try? You tried to apologize to yourself? But, you but then she's like totally fine with him living in her shed. She's like, oh, awesome. Christians never commit crimes. All right. Yeah. Good day. Right. <laughs> and then she has the Columbo moment. Except, yes. <laughs> except for like post senility Columbo, right? <laughs> right. If if Columbo's moment just didn't go anywhere, when if at the end of it he was like, "Wait, why was I talking about wooden escalators again?" This yeah. makes no sense. No, like Peter Falk at Comic Con now trying yeah. to do a Columbo <laughs> impression. <laughs> yeah. She she's like one more thing. My husband is an asshole. And Simon's like, <laughs> yeah, I fucking met him. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, uh, well, goodbye. Yeah, she says, I love this line so goddamn much. She says, I married him despite my father. I mean, we got his blessing. Right? Like, don't don't think that the woman <laughs> in this movie is an autonomous human with we're, her own thoughts and desires or we're anything. We're not fucking <laughs> Jews, but like, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, Joseph, you know, he's a little, um, he's a little honest. And, uh, and of course by that, I mean, and Simon's like hammer fights. She's like, yes. <laughs> <hammer fights." 
love it. She describes him as a little honest and a little fiery. I'm like, I bet that's how my wife describes me. I bet that is how we say it. We say it warns people who have come over to help us out with stuff. He's a little bit honest and fiery. <laughs> but she's that's not a euphemism for like whatever physical abuse they're not willing to tell us about that yeah. clearly is the character of this movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. There is a non speaking role for spousal abuse in this episode. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. It's, it's always sick. just sort of lurking in the back corner of a lot of these scenes. Yeah. <laughs> She does later in the show try to like cover that up. She's like, never me. He's never mad yeah, at me. Right, or right. Yes, yeah. At me. <laughs> so, yeah. But so she apologizes for dropping so much exposition on him all at once. And then, by the way, she, she calls him out for not saying grace. Right. He goes to eat the sandwich. She's like, wait, aren't you a Christian? I thought you were going to do. Don't you do a little prayer? Don't you? <laughs> she, she does it so aggressively, too. He like st he's like, oh, thanks. Thanks so much for the sandwich and the concrete floor. Great. He starts to take a bite and she's like, say grace right now, you fucking Jew. Sorry. <laughs> Nailed you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, I get knew excited. it. You I knew that beard armor. was for something. <laughs> I said I've, I said the J word twice this scene. I feel bad. Okay, sorry, sorry. Also, mark that square on your Christian movie bingo card. He doesn't know how to say grace. And I just want to say the Bible is like 14% instructions on praying before you eat, dude. Come on, what are you reading in that thing? Well, okay, so this is <laughs> this is a trope that I absolutely fucking love and exists in a lot of Christian movies. And I didn't realize this is what we were going for with Simon until we saw this scene, that he's not really a Christian and he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he found the Bible and he was so inspired by it that he wants to be a Christian, right? So we're watching his journey to Christendom, to full Christendom, whatever that means. But the idea of somebody reading through a Bible and by themselves trying to piece together what this means in terms of like theology or your spiritual worldview is goddamn hilarious to anybody <laughs> who's read the Bible. <laughs> right? Can you imagine somebody going through that book unfamiliar with Christianity and, and like following the instructions that they found therein? He just ends up burning <laughs> witches like they did in Papua New Guinea, and they're like, "Oh fuck, no!" Right, uh, guys, we got we got to send someone after Simon. No, but it <laughs> says it in the thing. It says yeah. it's pretty clear. It really I thought it said that. Really does. You got to scare these chickens out of their nest before you take the eggs. Come on, Simon, don't <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. They they even confused themselves on this in the very last scene. At one point, the crazy hammer guy was like, "Hey, man, doesn't Jesus say don't be a fucking dick?" And Simon's like, actually, no, I've been reading it. It does not say that. Like, oh, <laughs> nope. He right. killed a fig tree for no goddamn yeah. reason. <laughs> In fact, there's a bunch of people who come up and ask him, hey, do you mean don't be a dick? And he says no, to be no. very clear, the and world's about to end. And he spits in their eye. And then he spits <laughs> at them. Yes, he does. <laughs> All right, so the next morning, the two of them are getting to work nice and early. I love this because we all wrote the exact same thing in our notes here, which is Simon says, your wife is nice. And Joseph goes, did you fuck her? <laughs> we all wrote that in our goddamn notes. <laughs> yes, we did. And, which, by the way, Joseph follows up with, by the way, she invited you to dinner, but try not to be a sloppy, fat fucking pig covered in fucking pig mud, okay? You stupid <laughs> shit fucker fuck fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the extent they go through to make this guy angry at all times is goddamn hilarious. But uh, but he can't swear. So he's a right, rageaholic yes. who's just yeah, like, he's oh, so many salmon his way through life. <laughs> rooting, tooting, <laughs> beans and grapes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, this scene, it starts with what, exactly what happened in the last episode. So I was waiting for a similar thing. It's just the first day of work, and they're, like, sitting in the little truck thing about to do day one of work. And I was sure Simon was going to be like, hey, so normally on my first day of these, you know, episode-long jobs that I get, <laughs> my Airbnb employer tells me about killing a minority. Do you <laughs> have a story about that? Uh, I would like to guess Octoroons. I got a little bingo card so thing I'm starting <laughs> in, my, in my Dora the Explorer backpack. Follow up, are you a minority? I can't tell what yeah. race you are. It's yeah. West Texas, you're kind of tanny. Dusty. Tanny. Can I say that? You're dusty. Is so. there a Mexican octor? What's the octoruna? <laughs> How would you say it? Mocturune. It would be octoroon, <laughs> I think. It would be, yeah. You got to roll it? You got to yeah, roll it? I didn't it. realize. Okay. I want you to know I am dedicating 100% of my brain to think of a Mexican dish that has the mock sound in it so that I can do... 
uh, Chalupa Tarun thing. Yeah, like and a Guac Tarun or something like I'm, that. Yeah. Guac Tarun, no! How dare you! No! I, I literally stopped breathing. I literally stopped breathing in my class. Eli's just reciting the Taco Bell menu in the background. <laughs> literally what I was doing. I was doing Taco, Chalupa, <laughs> Mexican <laughs> Pizza Room. No, that's dumb. And then you just throw out Guac Tarun. How dare you? <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, this is good. This, these are timeless Ocarina jokes. Ocarina of time. That's Zelda. <laughs> Shit. All right. So, yeah, he says he, he invites him to dinner that night. He's like, you can come and eat in my house, but clean up. He's like, you know, I'm a homeless guy sleeping in your garage with no running water. So, sure. Yeah, I'll be nice and clean. <laughs> but, okay. But then they go to see this potential client. And we have to show, like, the, the program demands, the script demands that we show what an asshole this guy is and how it, you know, doesn't allow him to get a job, right? So he goes up to this potential client, and the guy's like, yeah, just bought me this new truck right here. It just was like, it's crappy and it sucks. Anyway, do you want me to do the job or what? <laughs> and a uh, quick little detail about this guy with the new truck. He's wearing a hat <laughs> that says... <laughs> TSG in big letters on the front. And I was like, okay, whatever. But then I I look, I paused it for a second. I was like, I got to know what that is because it says something in small letters. Uh, TSG stands for tank safety gauge. So this guy's a, a big supporter of that in what? his life. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Very important. What gauge would make <laughs> a tank safe? I'm trying to imagine... <laughs> On the front of the That's big like rocket launcher, there's a gauge that blocks the rocket. I have <laughs> no idea. In, in inside the tank itself, it tells you how much tankiness the tank still contains. <laughs> yeah. There's just a big communism gauge inside. Yeah. Like, this is a pretty fucking socialist tank. All it's right. Tanky. Let's go tank, get a tank. Chinese guy to stand in front of it for a little while. That'll bring those levels <laughs> right down. <laughs> and then the guy drives off and immediately Joseph turns to Simon and he's like, well, that is definitely someone else's fault. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck everyone that isn't me. <laughs> and Simon's like, you you, you should have told him his truck was awesome or something. And he's like, man, you sound like my fucking wife. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> you did fuck my wife. <laughs> He's like, people should hire me because I'm good at stuff, even if I'm an asshole. And I'm like, man, you should try podcasting. Dude, you would be amazed. That's right. Scathing oil rig guy. You should explain accelerationism on Twitter. <laughs> and this is where Simon's like, you know, the Bible says to be as wise as a serpent, but as gentle as a dove. To which Joseph replies, you're not like a dove, you're fat. <laughs> yes. Simon's like. Okay. Fuck you. All right. Dove. All right. Dove. Simon the dovey dove. Dove and fucking dove dove. All right. Just don't say dove again. <laughs> now, get in a bag in my vest. I'm going to produce you magically, motherfucker. Can't do it. That's right. <laughs> fucking guac arena, whatever it was. <laughs> that was me. Fuck. All right. Well, I got to say, something tells me that a dude making fun of Simon's efforts to be pigeon-like hit a little close to home for Eli. So we're going to take a quick break. Thank you. But we're going to be back in a minute with even more Sons of Thunder. Fucking mailbox! Uh, excuse God me, Simon. Have you got a second? Uh, yes, ma'am. I just okay. wanted to thank you. I mean, you who designs a mailbox like this? A fucking idiot! A fat idiot! That's who would design it like this! You know, for coming and helping us out. You know, business has been bad lately. It means the world that you would just come on. Fuck this fucking thing! You're wow. here. It means the world that you're here. Well, uh, ma'am, all I know is You know what? Yeah, that, I'm going to uh, shit in this Jesus. fucking thing, and then okay. I'm going to send it back. Okay. You know, send, send whichever idiot made this fucking thing a big giant turd just like he sent me. Yeah, so as I was saying, I'm glad to be here. Uh, as to why business is bad. Hi, uh, I Big Ben's I chili. I want to order okay. two, th you know what, three extra large chili. Uh, you might want to consider that. Uh, what do you mean you don't deliver? You, yeah. you know what, what's your home address? Your home address. My, my husband's a dick. Yeah, yeah, your husband's a dick. That's what I was going to say. Because I'm going to send you a mailbox full of shit. That's why. Oh, not again. And we're back, and we're going to rejoin the action at Joseph's house, having dinner with his family. 
And there's because, again, like Joseph has to be angry at all times. So now we're getting him being pissy with his wife for taking too long to finish the saying grace. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> she is taking a comically long time really as is. though yeah. to tempt. Her. Thank you, God, for the food. All right. I'm going to start. My husband. All right. Fuck. And I'm going to. And our God new man <laughs> And my parents. <laughs> I'm. I, I I took a bite of my fork that fucking and time. You gotta be kidding me. The phone book in the following order. Here yeah, right. Go. And my grandparents, <laughs> my great grandparents, my great great grand. Yeah, right, right. But eventually he gets to eat, and then she invites uh, Simon to go to church with them. Right? She's like, I saw you reading the Bible in between every single scene. Would you like to go to the uh, to church? And he goes, Well, I haven't been to church in a very long time. Like, fucking, why not? <laughs> You're a big Bible guy. Why the fuck wouldn't you just go to a church? Oh, and then, of course, Joseph is pissed about that, too, right? He's pissed off that she invited Simon to church as well. <laughs> well, she invites him like uh, like she's trying to get a fucking dog as a kid. She's <laughs> like, can we take him to church, please? Please. <laughs> Joseph's like, fine, but you're picking up his shit in a plastic bag outside the church. <laughs> and she probably will, you know, like given what we know about the character so far. Yeah, that's probably a good stipulation. Flash to cut to Simon all curled up like a shrimp outside of the church. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we go to their little shitty ass church. And this is where we get the turn, right? Because Haley's mom is there and she introduces him to Simon and they have a big old hug and everything. But then she introduces the father-in-law and the father-in-law is is the old guy that uh, Joseph was chasing around with the hammer that keeps stealing all of his jobs. <laughs> yep. And as they're walking into church, she's like, honey, can you please not get into any hammer fights? <laughs> like, I make no promises. <laughs> oh, she's slowly de-hammering him like those get rid of your weapon scenes in action movies, <laughs> pulling hammers <laughs> out of his ankle holster. <laughs> Yeah, and so, and also, like, so he's, of course, having this conversation about, like, wow, I haven't been in a church since I was a kid. Simon is, right? And I'm just like, is is Christianity, like, a cargo cult thing for him that I just, <laughs> I, I want to explore that more. But instead, we're, like, we're drilling down into the relationship between Joseph and his father-in-law. And this is where we will be introduced to the father-in-law's character, which is totally normal man who Joseph is frothing at the mouth, angry at, at all times. <laughs> yes. And as, and as the show will go on for less and less of a reason, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. He says hello to him. Like fucking Newman. He's like, hello, Lane. <laughs> he totally does. Again, the wife's like, be nice. And he's just like slowly lowering a hammer back into his <laughs> weird Damn hammer it. thing on his jeans. <laughs> And again, Lane is perfectly nice. He's like, hey, Joseph, how you doing? And he's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, good to see you, honey. And she's like, oh, you too. <laughs> this is our nomadic surf. <laughs> he's, he's oversized. <laughs> he's very big. So, okay, so they church it up a bit. Now we have this amazing moment with the preacher because right, at first the preacher comes in and says, wow, I've been doing a very good job so far at being a preacher, huh? Everyone say amen. <laughs> <laughs> How great was that sermon that we just cut into that we couldn't show you, but it was great. Just a second ago. Oh, man. So good, right? Oh. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Such a good sermon, yeah. rabble. And then the black fucking preacher decides to tell the entirely white congregation about persecution, but not that kind, no. Not the real kind that happens in the universe that he could rightfully discuss and probably should with a bunch of West Texans. But because this show is written by a white guy, this African-American gentleman would like to talk about the imaginary kind of persecution where Christians are persecuted in Texas yep. for being Christian. And he, he does his little <laughs> survey. He's like, let me ask you all a question today. Who here had someone try to stop them from coming to church or take away their Bible or attack them? And no one at so all good. raises their hand. Yep. Giant, giant pause. Anybody persecuted? Oh, you, I thought you were. No. Nope. Oh, you just nope. needed a pee. Nobody, you, you, I, it looked like you were going to raise. No. Okay. Uh, 
Any, uh, how about Jew cups at Starbucks? Uh, hands up for that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He li- so much he, persecution. He literally says, he's like, well, you know, John says we shall be persecuted for our faith. So oh, I'm just checking. We are. I was just checking again. <laughs> open. So this leads Simon to flashback because he was persecuted once for being a Christian, guys. See? And so, okay, we, we flashback. He's, you know, out grinding metal one all testosterone one day when yeah, he's beveling the end of a stick. Yep. <laughs> Why? Why is he? Do- anyway, yeah, so he's grinding metal. Maverick Von Hogg shows up and he sits down and he starts yelling at him and he's like, Dozer! And he's like, Man, I'm right. I'm in the garage. You could just tap me on the shoulder. <laughs> Obviously, I'm right here. Do you want to wait in. for some for a rainstorm to scream dozer again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to time it with the lightning, something like that. Yeah. Also, this is supposed to be shot in a badass like biker gang place, but it's very clearly someone's garage shop in suburbia. Right. They pan out too far for a second. You see kids playing stickball and like <laughs> reporting each other on nextdoor.com. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and so uh, Maverick Von Hogg starts taunting him about the Bible. He's like, bring out that Bible, you fucking nerd. Let's see it. Let's see, you've been reading that for a while now. Give me some fucking answers, nerd. Give me some answers from your book of answers. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Dozer's like, yeah, it's a, it, it doesn't, doesn't really work like that. You, know? <laughs> you don't get, like, tangible stuff. I don't yeah, know, man. It's not, it's not, <laughs> yeah, but but Ringo ain't buying this Jesus saves bullshit. In fact, he starts persecuting the crap. Wait, that's not what that word means, is it? Just, just making fun of him. <laughs> telling him he's wrong. Yeah, today I learned not... we are deeply persecuting a lot of people. <laughs> So, but, but Ringo, Maverick Von Hogg's character, stands there with him. He like pulls out his Bible and he's like, now throw it in the fire. And he's like, no, man, I'm not going to do that. And he goes, oh, oh, I was hoping you were gonna all right. It. Well, that was it's really weird that you would just have a fire here, but you did. It was so convenient. And then you didn't do it. Fuck you. He also says that, like, <laughs> we're going to lose you like we did Schmitty and Coltrane yeah. and boop boop. And I know he means that they like died in biker gang fights, but I just want there to be like a scourge of conversions in this biker gang. <laughs> and poor Angie's just sitting there being like, all right, maybe we, is it something we're doing? We've lost four guys to Jesus this year. But that is what they're saying, yes. I think. Yeah, I, that's what yeah, I got. They've lost thousands of meth dealers to. Bibles, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> asshole. Throw that book in the fire right now. Yeah. <laughs> Greg Abbott walks into the frame, just like the front door of public schools in liberal states. <laughs> the more you know. All right, but then we finish that flashback. We cut back to the sermon, and this is where the fucking pastor's going like, okay, all right, now I know... It seems that most of you don't think that you were persecuted today on your work on your way to church. Let me try to explain to you that you're wrong. Paul says in the Bible these words that don't make the damnedest lick of sense altogether. <laughs> Here, I could not pull meaning. It was like listening to Deepak fucking Chopra. Hey, you know, um, Paul the Apostle says that your most recent dooley do was an accurate depiction of reality. So. <laughs> Did anyone have a uh, recent doodly do? You, sir, you look like you were in a doodly do just now. <laughs> oh, 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 I was at Starbucks. Yeah, we already did that one. We already did that one. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? Yeah, doodly do to your Starbucks thing. That's, it was, yeah, a, red, it was a red cup. Yeah, Fuck motherfuckers. <laughs> And the hands, they match the ladies on the other package, so who's that? <laughs> but, okay, but the, the, <laughs> basically, though, I feel like if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the pastor's like, well, just keep it up, guys. Somebody's bound to persecute us eventually. <laughs> you know, I told the barista to say a slur word as my name and he wouldn't do it. That's fucking persecution, wouldn't right? Wouldn't do it. I, I wrote I said F slur very clearly. <laughs> he looked, like he didn't even care what God hated. Yeah. Well, what's I, I almost think that he was like, well, you know, Paul says we're persecuted for our faith and 
we're kind of whole hog into the every word of the Bible is the truth thing. So <laughs> I figure if we're doing the bats or birds thing, we should do the fucking Paul says it where it means it's true thing, right? <laughs> we're still pretending mustard seeds are small. Yeah. We're going to pretend the earth is 4,000 years old, but we're not going to pretend to be persecuted. That's a matter of opinion, <laughs> motherfuckers. Get on board. Wait till I tell you what a circle is. <laughs> All right, so then the sermon ends, and we fast forward to the, like the shaking hands on the way out bit, right? And this is so that Simon can have this moment with the preacher where he asks him, like, he's like, but do you think that God can forgive even me? <laughs> yeah, and, and the preacher's like, oh, absolutely, yeah. God forgives everything. And Simon's like, I was a murdery meth dealer. And he's like, ooh, you should have led with the murdery. <laughs> he says, he says, forgiveness is God's whole purpose. I'm like, so somewhere along the way in his goal towards forgiveness, he created crotch fungus and seahorses. Show me this plan. <laughs> it's a lot of different strings. Even and with that stuff, the meth dealing. How does that <laughs> Well, and look, in the background, we see Lane <laughs> talking to Joseph. And I wrote in my notes as a joke, I want them to get in a fight while he's asking these very basic Christian and questions. And shove. <laughs> and they do. They do. They do. They get into a shove fight. And by they get into a shove fight, what we mean is Joseph shoves this elderly gentleman out of the blue and then runs off. <laughs> right? Because when they get into a fight, what that means is that Joseph has escalated the fuck out of it. And the old man's standing around going, what? <laughs> <laughs> so so he wanders off what well, that leaves simon without a ride home damn it so the in-laws offer simon a ride because again they are perfectly nice people and this show is desperate to convince us that this is evenly matched avarice yeah no no it's the both sides of the political spectrum argument apparently or something <laughs> like that yeah all right so uh, they drop Simon back off at Joseph and Haley is the wife's name. So Joseph and Haley's house. And then the mom-in-law tells her husband to apologize to Joseph for being shoved like he means it. Yes. And they they do like... Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and I just love how befuddled Simon is through all of this, right? Because he's the protagonist. He's supposed to be like guiding them to the Christian worldview. But instead, it, he just looks at everything that happens in this scene like he's trying to stare directly into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but Joseph won't apologize. So they drive off. And then we get this scene where fucking Simon is doing laundry at their house. Right. So that there can be some reason for him to be there. And then Haley starts his bitching about how Joseph is psychologically manipulative and an abuser. But not to her, though. No, not to me. It's, just, yeah. it's great to me. It's just everyone, everyone but me. Yeah. <laughs> and Simon's so confused. She's like, hey, uh, random nomadic surf that I just met. Why are my dad and my husband always fighting? What do you think that's about? <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just here to wash my disgusting one pair of pants so you can let me in the house. I don't know. As you can see, I have no pants on. Can I go? <laughs> have you tried Jesus for one and or both of them? Well, and that's the fucked up thing about it because he turns to this wife who is like, clearly like in, in real life, somebody has a conversation like this. They're sending out a signal that their husband is abusive and they want your help, right? Right. Like in real life. So they're having this conversation and he turns to her and with this incredibly damaging ass message, he's like, well, you know, when people refuse to change and, you know, you just naturally expect them to say they will never change. But no, he says, you need to change him with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, well, I've, I've been praying for that and like nothing's happening. <laughs> Simon's like, yeah, that, that's that's what often happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it. I've been, I've been driving around Texas like an idiot for years. Keep asking God for a fucking sign. I don't know. I'm a nomadic surf now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was better off as a fucking meth dealer, I'll be honest with you. Had a rank and everything. All right. Well, as hard as it is to rip our attention away from the minor family discord with no discernible stakes set against the thrilling backdrop of laundry doing, we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me get back through the hard sell here. Will Haley's detergent get out even Simon's toughest stains? 
Will he use a liquid softener or dryer sheets? Will he tumble dry? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the, well, why didn't you just say so conclusion of Sons of Thunder, Episode 2. Simon, this is my father, Lane. Oh, uh, pleasure to meet you, Simon. Whatever, big fat fuck. Oh, hi. Hi, Joseph. Fuck you. Okay, uh, please, you know, we're... We're at church, if you don't mind just... These two, always civil. fighting. What? He said, he said, fuck you to me at a church. Yeah, but you just said it just now. You mean when I repeated what he said? Yes. Give me your shoe. Give me your shoe. God Joseph, no, no, no. Get off my leg. Boys, Get off bo my man, leg. They're, these two, am I Seriously? right? Both of them. Seriously? Fine. Here, look, honey, you got to stop acting like Joseph and I are... Two equal sides of like. Uh, I'm gonna take like a shit in it. All right. Both of you stop. Uh, okay. I will not shit in Joseph's shoe. Joseph? Oh, I'm shitting in your shoe. Okay. Both of you apologize. And we're back for more of this shit. We're gonna open up on a Joseph and Simon hard at work scene. But again, Joseph is a goddamn cartoon, right? So he has to like <laughs> angrily work and angrily walk and. Angrily get in the truck. <laughs> it's like they had a devil's threesome and agreed not to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, and I feel so sorry for this actor because obviously, like, the director just said, no, 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 angrier, angrier over and over <laughs> again. He did what he could. So they're driving along, and Joseph happens to see Lane, the, the father in law, talking to one of his most important contracts, goddammit. And this is where we get Heath's best worst. <laughs> it's the best punch ever. <laughs> it's like he had the fight choreographer from Cats. <laughs> <laughs> he stops before the punch to show off his butthole a little bit and then argue about whether they should CGI that back out or leave it. <laughs> like, I literally have been punched harder than this by Lila, though, by my cat. <laughs> I've been punched harder than this by Heath on stage. <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> you walked, you were like, face is out. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, okay, so he shows up. And, yes, it's a silly, weak-ass punch that takes forever and everything. But still... He just pulled over the side of the road and yelled, hey, Lane, and then punched an elderly gentleman in the face. His father-in-law. Yeah, just not even a stranger. <laughs> the father of his wife. This is a crazy overreaction if you're not related to your business rival. Yeah, right, right, exactly. So, And then it turns out that Lane wasn't there to try to scoop up this big contract. He's just buddies with that guy. He just showed up for a visit. So literally, the guy's just there. He's like driving along. He's like, oh, it's Dave. I'll talk to my buddy, Dave. And then his son-in-law comes up out of nowhere and punches him in the fucking head. And again, this movie will never acknowledge that the reason he's losing business to his father-in-law is because he's the kind of person who drives up and punches people <laughs> in the head. <laughs> Well, and one of the guys, one of the characters, like the, the under fives is like, I'm calling the sheriff. And I'm like, yes, someone who's not part of this movie gets it. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Call the fucking sheriff. So while they're doing that, we go we go back into our flashback. We're back at that neon pink bar that Simon used to peruse his Bible in. And we have another scene where Don Swayze shows up and <laughs> takes some poor damn drink order. <laughs> Has two juices ready. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's such a good power move. I just love that. I don't know. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to work that out. He also tries to guilt him back into the meth dealing biker gang here. It's like after everything I've done for you, I wrote in my notes, Angie's obviously Jewish. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And then, okay, so yeah, they, so he's telling him he doesn't want to be in the biker gang anymore. And Angie's like, well, you know, you need my permission to leave. And he's like, right, can I just, but I'm going to leave anyway. So I don't, but yes, could you Not just... that simple. You'll need my blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and some, I don't know, Cobra coverage, maybe. We yeah, don't. <laughs> have to sign this paperwork and an exit interview. Would you mind doing an exit interview? Yeah. But he, he yells at him. He's like, you swore an oath. <laughs> he like turns to the biker bar. He's like, what's the oath, guys? And they're all like, 
always sell meth and never be Christian. Right. <laughs> Everybody's all throwing out different words. No, you, you had it. You, had it. No, just, you lead us. Tom will lead us in the oath. Yeah, and then there's this weird moment where Don Swayze says to him, he's like, well, if you're going to leave the gang, you know what I'm going to need back, right? And Dozer's like, why wouldn't you just use the specific noun of the thing? Are we trying to set up some kind of like mystery for the next? Yeah, it's mystery for the next episode. Oh, right. Yes. Then <laughs> what we need. back? Yes. Okay. I just want Angie to be the head of a meth dealing biker gang who won't use the words for drugs like your dad trying to score off you. Just like, all right, gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome. We've made some you know what, and we're gonna sell it to some you know who's. Huh? Got any sloopy sloop? What? <laughs> sloopy sloop? Did everyone bring their shaving kit? <laughs> so, and then okay, so now in the first episode, right, there was a part of the big flashback there was him showing up at his house. And saying to his girlfriend, hey, I just I was at the bar and I just got into a big fight and I hurt Ringo pretty bad. I need to run. And so right then him and Ringo, him and Maverick Von Hogg are about to get into a big fight and I'm getting all excited. But then the flashback ends because fuck them. Yeah, we don't see the big fight. We do see him bonk Ringo's head against the bar once, but then we miss the rest of the fight. Yeah. All right. So now we're back at Simon is showing back up at Joseph's house. Joseph has been arrested for punching an old man in the face. Which this show is pretty sure is not nice, right? It's like, I can't believe your dad's pressing charges like a northern pussy. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, that's exactly it, right? Because like uh, Simon's getting out at his house and the wife is running off and she's like, can't show up. My dick dad arrested my husband just because he punched him in the face out of the blue. Jeez. Asshole. <laughs> The two of them, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both of them equally are responsible for this situation. A lot of good people on both sides. A lot of good people, <laughs> uh, bad people. I don't know. So then, okay, so we get Simon. He's about to just dip the fuck out, which would have been amazing, right? If that had been the end of the season where he's just like, I don't need this fucking drama. Fuck all of these guys. Oh, if he just drives off. Sons of Thunder. Bam, bam. Really thought I'd be able to do something more impactful with the Bible. They're just really just argued, punching each other. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go to the next episode. <laughs> Fuck all this. There aren't even stakes yet. 94% of this book tells him to fight to the death. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but so he's about to leave, but then instead he goes to look at the clipboard and have himself a think. <laughs> And now he has an idea, which we know because we can see it. We can see it crawling under his skin towards his head. Oh, the, the clipboard's just the script to, to episode three. He's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, it doesn't get any better. I can stick around this episode for a little while. And he, he gets in the guy's truck and drives away. Now, it's going to turn out that he's doing work for Joseph. But God, I wanted him to steal their truck so badly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, Love no, fucking great bike into the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, apparently Simon's gone off to machine all the machines for Joseph. Oh my God! I lo they can't ever know how anything works in any <laughs> oh, of these movies. Ever, ever, ever. I don't like. Aren't these a bunch of like Southern Christian people who would know about a tool or two? I don't know. But they they start off the scene and Simon's just like touching tubes <laughs> so gently. <laughs> gently. Like, yep. <laughs> All right. This is where running my finger along this, this tube seems to lead to the uh, boxy thing. <laughs> All right. All right. That's done good. for the day. That's a day good, of work good. right there. Yep. Still tubes, still box. All righty. Earned my concrete slab. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Just like yesterday. But as he's tube molesting. The mom-in-law shows up. She needs Simon's help. So apparently, Lane, the father-in-law, has dropped the charges against Joseph. Joseph's out of jail. And now she wants to have an asshole intervention with him, but she needs a very large gentleman to physically drag him into his home so that they can do that. <laughs> and again, just in the dad's defense, he dropped the charges against his son-in-law for punching him for stealing his business. And now they're going to have an asshole intervention. One of them will need to be dragged to it. The other one will show up of his own free will. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty all, all pretty important to the way this resolves. So 
Simon comes into the garage and Joseph's like, hey, I hear you were out doing uh, work while I was in jail. He's like, yeah, I did. A couple of the judges are like, I hope you didn't fuck any of them up, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> okay. No, no. I, I was a, a tube checker for my back. <laughs> It's not. You really just you run your just hand run down the your tube finger and make sure gently, it goes to the box of things. Right, and right. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the whole thing. Right. <laughs> and he's like, hey, look, I hate to do this, but, uh, you know, there's like eight minutes left in this episode. Your mom-in-law wanted uh, to resolve it, so I am going to drag you into your own home now. <laughs> right, but, like, they couldn't do that fight choreography with angry little Joseph, so he's just like, come on. And he's like, yes. And he's like, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how is there not a fight there? I wanted like a big struggle with this giant guy wrestling Joe into the oh, house. That would have been so good. Joe He's like grabs the door frame like yes. a cat you're trying to put into a carrier. <laughs> no, no. Get it. He, he, he drags and goes limp. Dude, you go and limp. Don't. Come He's on. pulling him. His pants come down around his ankle. Joseph, come on now. I'm this shitting, man. I'm shitting. You want to deal? You're gonna have to deal with the shit first before we get to this. I'll throw up on you like a vulture. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. I didn't have lunch. <laughs> I fought a cartel in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and okay. So now it's time for an asshole intervention. This is going to happen to me one of these days. I was just like, I watched this scene and I just imagined Andrew and Heath and Eli sitting around after I'd, Hold all but three of the listeners to go fuck themselves. I'm I'm ready for this is what I'm saying, guys. I'm ready. Except you will definitely go limp and vomit on us. Oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. No, You're no, not I'm just not going, going easy on room. Simon. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so mom-in-law is going to fix all the anger issues with Jesus, right? She says, you guys are just like Jonah, which is why I'm going to make you live together in a big fish for the next 24 hours. No, that would have been... That would have been such a better episode. Well, I love I love that it's like, why don't you both tell your sides of the story? And Lane is like, I don't like being punched. And then Joseph's <laughs> like, I don't like it when you talk to my clients. To which yeah. everyone in the room responds, see, so you've both made mistakes. <laughs> yep. so, yeah, and, and, and Lane in his defense is like, okay, so... One of us punched the other one in the face for no reason. I'm not going to name names. And the mother-in-law goes off on him. His wife is like, hey, you know what? I've been married to you for a long time. I've wanted to punch you the whole fucking time. You need to shut the fuck up. You built a wall around yourself. And not the good kind like Mexico pays for a bad wall. <laughs> and then Joseph chimes in. He's like, get him, mom-in-law. And the mom-in-law is like, I'm going to do you later. God damn it. Stop. You're the punch face guy, just to be clear, uh, <laughs> one more time. But yes, my husband is emotionally distant, Ty. So <laughs> here we are. And when she turns to Joseph, right, she's like, and you. If your kids piss you off, are you going to, oh, we are pro kid punching. Are you yep. going to uh, burn down their treehouse? Which I feel like is an edge case for us about whether or not <laughs> that's okay. Because as I mentioned, our worldview very much accepts the hitting of children. Yeah, right. No, and then she's and there's this amazing moment where Joe's just like, well, I wish you wouldn't treat me like I'm some kind of 14-year-old kid. Gah! <laughs> you want me to treat you, the man who punched me this afternoon for talking to someone without your permission? More like an adult. Okay, I just <laughs> yes! want to make sure we're all on the same page here. <laughs> and then so they turn to him, and this this is such an amazing moment. So the mom turns to him and says, all right, so husband, why have you been sniping clients away from Joseph's business? And he says, he explains that it's really because this whole time he wanted to consolidate all of his business and all of Joseph's business so he could hand the business off to Joseph someday when he was ready to retire. So he was trying to sabotage this guy's business so he'd be willing to take over his business. Okay. Yeah, and everybody's just like, hey, man, you just say your plan out loud one time and that solves a lot of this. You're fine. I already bought a banner. You're fucking Morgan on D and D minus. Just say what you do. <laughs> well, see now what I interpreted the dad's plan was is like you know I was planning on giving him the business, but um, 
he keeps being a massive piece of shit. Yeah. Including the time he quit my business and started his own to rival me, which again is him instigating the problem. But I guess I'm sorry because there's only four minutes left in the episode. Right. Right. Well, and then and Joseph's like, he's he's pissed off about the giving him the company plan, apparently. So he goes to leave and then Simon grabs him to stop him. And he's like, fuck, man, I can't punch you in an intervention about how you shouldn't punch people. This is shit. I've really My painted God. myself into a corner. <laughs> fuck. I guess you just can go outside now. Damn. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut this oil business in half with scissors. <laughs> Do either of you object? No, it's the Jewish part. No. That's the Jewish part. Skip, skip. <laughs> I'll cut the tip off the business. So that <laughs> Wait, that also. Your, is the your babies aren't born with thorns in their eyes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not just at the beginning. It's a long book. <laughs> Everyone tells me it gets better. And then we violently return to that flashback. <laughs> right where, where Ringo is going off on Simon for thinking that Jesus loves him, even though no one could ever love Dozer. <laughs> the biker gang arguing about apologetics here is the fucking greatest. <laughs> it's, it's pretty so silly. <laughs> when Angie's like, if you leave, nobody will know what a piece of shit you are. That sounded better in my head, right? Is that a bad? <laughs> we sell <sighs> meth to kids. You think a loving God would allow that, idiot? Idiot. <laughs> it just flashes forward. They're going over the Kalam cosmological argument. You see, when you break it down into like actual logic, it's just a self. You mean like statement. ontologically? Yeah, ontologically. So, you see what I'm okay. saying? Like it doesn't track. We are meth dealers. We are so, meth dealers. <laughs> I love Don Swayze tries to step into media, but damn it, Ringo just can't control his emotions. And then Simon leaves, and that's the whole flashback. We've been flashing back to this this entire episode. It's just him walking out a door at length. That's it. <laughs> that's the whole fucking nine yards. Anyway, so meanwhile, Joseph is outside angrily pouting. And his wife walks up and she goes, do you like being angry all of the time? And I feel like this show's being awfully fucking judgy at that point. I feel like that's just his choice. He, maybe he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't dislike it. Honey, yeah. You seething on the porch? <laughs> you seething? You want to just, yeah, can you can you lower the hammer? Because I feel like he's burning up the lawn. Like, I am seething up and to the left, okay? Can I seethe up and to the left? On a man, can a man <laughs> seethe up and to the left on his own porch anymore? Isn't this America? <laughs> also, I don't know why, but there must have been like a weird distance between shooting the inside shot and the outside shot because the actress who plays the wife lost like, 15 very obvious <laughs> pounds between takes. Did you guys go back and see this? Yes. I noticed that I your nose like go back it. through and I'm like, wow, yeah, she really did. <laughs> she like fucking Not did her first that. week of a juice cleanse in between shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so then the, then the uh, uh, Joseph is like, he turns to his wife and he's like, all angrily says, you knew your dad was going to give me his business this whole fucking time, didn't you? And she's like, well, you know, I had my suspicions. He's like, why the fuck wouldn't you have told them to me? There is no universe in which it makes sense for you people not to tell me this. <laughs> I wouldn't have so punched dumb. him if I knew he was going to give me a thing. Oh, I'm an asshole. I just yeah, right. know what yeah, I know. Exactly. That I hear exactly. It. <laughs> she goes, what do you even want? And he's like, I don't. We really haven't fleshed out my 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 entire character description is angry at this point. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I wrote. He know. wants to be angry all the time. It's yeah. pretty clear. <laughs> I want to see up and to the left. What did I just fucking say? <laughs> he goes He goes back inside. And then oh, he goes back inside. He apologizes to his father-in-law for <laughs> punching him in the face. Yeah. He's just like, sorry I punched you in the face. <laughs> this is apparently my bad. I feel like none of us fully landed there yet in this episode, <laughs> which is weird. But <laughs> fine. You well, can no. give me your business. <laughs> because, because then the fucking mom-in-law turns after Joseph apologizes turns to her husband and says, would you like to apologize to Joseph now? And he's like, for giving him my business or for getting punched in the face by him? I'd love to hear you guys tell me what I should say. Like, what in <laughs> your head? Give me a first draft of my, I'm sorry my jaw is so punchable. Is that? <laughs> and he goes, he turns to the to Joseph and he goes, I'll tell you what, if you'd like, 
you could handle the service part of our company, not the part where you talk to humans because you punch them in the face, but the service <laughs> part. It's you want to you want to be the tube guy? You, be the tube <laughs> you guy. can gently run your fingers along the tube. I sh I should have asked you earlier to be the tube guy, and I understand why you punched me in the face. That's that's a tie again. We'll call that a tie. You want to be tube guy? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So the solution, by the way, to this entire problem, to this entire episode long problem of these two can't be eight inches away from each other without punching each other in the face and shit, was they should work together as even partners. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This show is so dumb. And that's when Simon is smiles, looks up to the sky, and points to God, being like, yep, solved it. That was God. But here's what actually happened it was uh, the mom, a woman, explaining basic logic to two idiot men. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah, God. That was God. <laughs> Wanted so badly for it to pan up, and he's just like, balloon. Sorry, I got distracted. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw there's a balloon. <laughs> hey, hey, you want to stop batting at the hey, balloon? <laughs> you can clearly not reach it. Nope, you still can't. All right, so now uh, I guess ha Simon's heading off for more adventures. Haley made him food because she's a woman, right? <laughs> And then he bikers away. All is right with the world. We, you know, we watch him biker for a bit. He bikers on empty roads. He bikers in traffic. He bikers on interstates. He bikers on county highways. Like, there's quite a bit of that, right? It's like the show doesn't know how to end, right? They're like, oh, uh, is there a button we push that makes the credits <laughs> come up? Or, uh, we, we mostly do movies. <laughs> What if we close on a big sandwich scene? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, that's it. He pulls over to the side of the road at some rest area to eat the food that Ailey's given him. He, he goes to pull it out of his bike, and I'm like, oh, please be the Jesus, the Explorer backpack. It's not. No. <laughs> yeah, what was happening with that this episode? He was just holding it for for the next one? I guess, <laughs> yeah. It's just it's the, it's the mystery goes on. But this time, though, here's the whole point of this scene. He goes to eat the sandwich, but this time remembers to say grace. He's getting pretty good at Christianing these days, guys. The <laughs> end. Christian. Thank you, God, for making me a successful hobo who's crushing it. <laughs> uh, I pray for a pie on a windowsill, and that's it. Great. <laughs> the end. Maybe a stick that I can tie all my belongings to. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that does it for our review of Sons of Thunder episode two. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to rope you in for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Uh, we'll be going back to the crazy Japanese cult, the Happy Science Group, for their third movie, Fantastic. The Laws of the Sun. Amazing. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring this episode to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Idiot, Skeptocrat, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and people trapped on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used for permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Simon went on to live in David Smalley's garage. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph is the person I must defeat in order to face Shang Tsung. <laughs> Eli never forgave Noah for beating him to Guac de Rim. Maverick Von Hogg. That's your new Jumanji. <laughs> Maverick Von Hogg. Yes. It yes. Works. You it feel it, well. right? It's powerful. I'm what is that? That means like son of hog in Germanish. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy was just like, I need a biker movie because it's like hog. We'll, we'll work it in. It's good. I'm a wrestler. <laughs>
we really should do just a Bible piece theater version of a couple of our greats. Like, um, like a Bible piece theater version of God's Not Dead could be the basis of our live show. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Like Heath, Eli, and uh, Noah act out God's Not Dead. Oh, my God. That's really oh, good. And just a mockery of all of God's Not Dead would be fucking incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. That- all right. So I'm glad we're recording. Morgan, send me this audio because this is like this. <laughs> this is the birth of something. Something just that's happened right. right there. Million dollar right. idea. I think that's a great idea, actually. I think we would. Oh, dude, the musical. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck God's yes. not dead. The musical. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and the and- newsboys show up and it's just talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great. This is so good shit. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to write a book and then I'm going to write a musical. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> After we get done finishing this podcast, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm right, gonna get go. this book musical. Because I'm gonna send you a mailbox full of shit. That's. <laughs> 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 Sorry, one more time. I'm a pro. At that time, you did not say four, uh, Eli. I did. No, you didn't. It's on the fucking Zencaster. I I swear to the sweet Lord above, <laughs> I did. But I can see on the Zencaster that you didn't. Morgan, there's no there's no bump. There's send Noah, send Noah my four. Um, Turn it into a techno remix. Separate file, just four. <laughs> I send Noah a desperate, or I send Morgan a desperate four. post-recorded four. <laughs> Wait, no, he. I'm going to show this to you. You, you back. You have to back me up on this. There is absolutely no movement whatsoever on. Then Zencaster got it wrong. We could do another count. Just in case. Do you have a screenshot? Is that are you yeah, I'm sending a a, I'm sending you a screenshot. I just, I just came through on Facebook. And you can see, you know, my account up at the top. And then you can see your Hostile. nice Hostile obvious work four. You're a nice obvious five. Right below you can see Eli. There's literally no movement at all around the four there. Yeah, you didn't say four, man. This There's... could be a screenshot from any situation. <laughs> You could have taken this years ago. There's no way of knowing. I mean, I've got like the date at the bottom right there and the special time. effects this, and modified and, 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 Photoshop and, and these this game episodes name that you made Jewish I Jewish know. media. Let, let's try it again. Say four and let's see if nothing pops up. Maybe you're the <laughs> All right, I will. <laughs> Did you guys hear it? Up. That was the best. That, time? that was the easiest setup that Eli's ever had in his life. <laughs> Two, <laughs> three, five. See, I don't know why it just doesn't. Sorry. Well, one more time, just to humor me. Yeah, for Zencaster. <laughs> one, two, three, four, four, five. five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.